House of Branding by Monique Martinez. Brand strategy describes the overall plan any company uses for going to market with new brands and existing brands. After all, you must have a name and a visual re representation that goes on every product you go to market with. There are two common strategies. One is house of brands and two is a branded house. A house of brands is going to market with a portfolio of separate brands. The company name Procter & Gamble is not on any of its products. Instead, an individual name is on the product, ranging from Tide to Dreff to Ivory to Game, and many of these brands are all over the world targeted at specific consumer segments, some of which are only sold in certain countries. Procter & Gamble operates more than 80 major brands, few of which have any link to P&G or to each other. In doing so, P&G sacrifices the economies of scale that come when leveraging a brand across multiple businesses. Each brand needs its own brand building investment. Those brands that cannot support investment themselves risk stagnation and decline. P&G also sacrifices brand leverage in that its brand tends to have a narrow range and potentially could be used more broadly. The house of brand strategy, however, allows firms to position brands clearly on functional benefits and to dominate niche segments. No compromises have to be made in positioning to accommodate the brand's use in other product market contexts. The brand connects directly to the niche customer with a targeted value position. P&G's brand strategy in the hair care category illustrates the house of brand strategy. Head and shoulders, dominates the dandruff control shampoo category. Her Plus targets a market of combined conditioner and shampoo product and has its own personality. Pantene, for hair so healthy it shines, a brand with a technolog technological heritage, focuses on the segment concerned with enhancing hair vitality. The total impact of these three distinct brands would be lessened if they restricted to the brand PNG Shampoo or were sold as PNG Dandruff Control, PNG Combo, and PNG Healthy Hair. PNG detergents are similarly well positioned to serve market. Tide, Cheer, Bold, and Dash each provide sets of focus value propositions that would be difficult to achieve with a single PNG detergent brand employing descriptors. Targeting markets with functional benefit positions is not the only reason for separating brands through a house of brand strategy. Five additional reasons include avoiding a brand association that would be incompatible with an offering. The Budweiser Association with the taste of beer would prevent the success of Budweiser Cola. Likewise, Volkswagen would adversely affect Porsches and Audi's images if those brands were linked to it. Second is signaling breakthrough advantages of new offerings. Toyota's decision to introduce its luxury car under the separate Lexus name signaled that the car was truly different from any Toyota car at all. Similarly, General Motors decided to create the Saturn brand unconnected to any existing GM nameplate so that the brand's message, a different kind of company, a different kind of car, would not be diluted. Third one is owning a new product class association with a name reflecting a key benefit. Glam toothpaste and reach toothbrushes are an example of this approach. The fourth one is avoiding or minimizing channel conflict. L'Oreal has cosmetic, cosmetic brands that are channel specific. The L'Oreal and Maybelline brands are sold through drugstores and mass merchants, while Lancome and Helena appear in high-end department stores and Redken is sold to professional hairstylists. When unconnected brands are sold through competing channels, conflict is usually not an issue.
Number five is targeting multiple and conflicting product lines or segments. For example, Nestle and Purina. Food and pet food need brands with no connection between them. Oftentimes, deciding which strategy is best is very difficult. As with all brand related efforts, the strategy you choose depends on your business objectives, the relationship with the customer or end user, and organizational culture. Often, the process of developing and using a decision matrix that leads marketers through a series of thought provoking questions yields the best answer for each organization. What percent of sales do you typically invest in promoting your various brands and offerings? Required investment Oftentimes, it is difficult deciding which strategy is best. As with all branding related efforts, the strategy you choose depends on your business objectives, relationship with the customer or end user, and organizational culture. Often, the process of developing and using a decision matrix that leads marketers through a series of thought-provoking questions yields the best answer for each organization. What percent of sales do you typically invest in promoting your various brand and offerings? Required investment and adequate budget are crucial consideration points. The less you're willing to invest, the more you should consider a branded house slash monolithic strategy. But does that make the organization more vulnerable by potentially tainting the image of the corporation and all other products, leveraging the same brand if some or higher risk innovative ventures do not work out? And does that limit your ability to expand into adjacent categories due to your corporate brand inelasticity? The unconnected a shadow endorser is not connected visibly to the endorsed brand, but many consumers know about the link. It represents a subcategory in the house of brand strategy that provides some of the advantages of having a known organization backing the brand, while minimizing any association contamination. The fact that the brands are not visibly linked makes a statement about each brand. Even when the link is discovered, it communicates the organization realization that the shadow endorsed brand represents a totally different product and market segment. Disney, of course, is the shadow endorser of a host of brands, including Mickey Mouse, Davy Crockett, and Snow White. The absence of a visual Disney endorsement allows each to develop a personality and set of characteristics largely unencumbered by the parent brand associations and other Disney characters, even though it is well known that they are part of the Disney family. The Overall, brand relationship spectrum is one of the most important parts of brand architecture of any organization. Every brand manager should be familiar with four basic brand strategies. By definition, brand structure, brand portfolio, or brand spectrum is only a set of brands across countries, businesses, or product markets. Of more importance than appropriate terminology is that you manage your brands. Not to manage your brands could prove very costly to your organization. Maybe the most known portfolio management process comes from the Boston Consulting Group. In branding, we could also speak of strategic brand, LinkedIn brand, silver bullet, and cash cow brands. Brand relationship spectrum is more detailed picture of your brand portfolio. Every brand manager should be familiar with the four basic strategies, such as shown before, branded house, sub brands, endorsed brands, and last but not least, the house of brands we just covered. Because I'm happy, I'm alone, if you feel like a